I'm Val Hurd. Welcome to my home. Come on in. You know, the great thing about having a studio attached to your house is you never have to leave it. You never have to get out of your slippers. You never have to wear a coat. You never even have to get into a car. You can make a snack anytime you want and you can fall directly into bed after you get through with the night. On the other hand, there's no one to tell you when to stop. And after two months of quarantine, I have to say that fair warning, when I go into that studio and open the door, imagination and reality tend to merge and I disappear. Okay, so let's take an orienting tour of the main floor of my studio. First up is my Karma Control, a retro CD player and tape deck. They sit on top of a cabinet housing my audiobook collection that plays continually while I'm working. There are many, many of them. Next up is my palette. I work mostly in oil stick, but no fear. I have the tube version in case I need them. There are my brushes and a spare cabinet with paint. In front of me is the main painting wall. Above me, you can see the pulley system that raises and lowers my canvases so I don't have to climb on a ladder. Along the main wall are a number of projects all crammed in together which are part of my New York show in September. The opposite wall has two thirds of a large seven by 12 foot oil on paper installation. Above me is the second floor where I do printmaking and framing. In front of me is the studio pup Pip. The back of the studio is where I'm creating my next video. First, let's talk about the oil paintings. The figures you see are all deities. They're ancient forms taken from textiles that I've collected on my travels. They have haunted my dreams for years. And now literally, they are covering my walls and they are fully occupying my space. They were originally created to ensure fertility, virility, and great harvests. Well, oddly enough, I find their purpose to be pretty darn current. Personally, I can use all the help I can get, so I've titled this four by six foot oil on linen, the protectors. On the other one, well, these ancient deities had either no gender identification or a joined gender. They were both male and female. So this installation is called The Elder Gods Weren't Male. All my work is embedded with symbols, both historic and pop culture. They reference where I've been and what I've seen. So I encourage all my viewers to visit the Nora Jaime Gallery this September in person and spend some time in front of them working out the clues. Okay, now let's switch gears and swing around to the back of the studio and talk about my video. This is my stool, by the way. I'm planted on it six to eight hours a day. I wanted to know what youthful influences drew me to the Middle East. So I started by drawing all my fave childhood movie characters. I mean, who wouldn't want to be Liz? Or Zorro? Or the Lone Ranger in Tonto? I read all the Oz books and of course saw the movie. I had a major, major crush on Johnny Weissmiller as Tarzan. And let's not forget Jeannie. So I realized all the movies I loved were of exotic places. I think I was really hardwired to travel. That led to the idea of a hand-drawn video in four acts that I call, What Did Happen to Alice? 
I created the stage sets that you see behind me so that I could really enter my worlds. Okay, so now considering that I haven't been to a uh, hairdresser in, oh gosh, like three months, um, let's do this with some alternate visuals. Stage one, the child who is influenced by her books and movies. Stage two, the youth in curious transition. Stage three, the traveler who has bounced between cultures for 30 years. And stage four, now, the sum of my experiences that add up to what exactly? Four larger stage sets with lighting and moving parts are being fabricated by Michael Zabrowski and his team at Generator in Burlington, Vermont. They too will be exhibited along with the video at my September exhibition. This watercolor is from the Traveler sequence. It moves across landscapes that change into the nomadic textiles that continue to fire my imagination to this day. This is my watercolor kit. It's made up of a ridiculous number of tubes. As you can see, they don't even all fit back into the uh, box anymore, but they travel with me wherever I go with two huge rubber bands around them. And I, you know, I wish I could tell you I had a great method, but I don't. It's pretty much making it up as I go along, but many, many years involved with it. So let me just show you how it works here. My watercolors are a, a combination of techniques that I've developed over the years. I'd like to say that they're the same ones that I use all the time, but I switch them up. Um, you know, it's sort of whatever works. I, I was never one who believed in um, any one technique, any one medium. You know, whatever worked for me at the time for whatever I was doing was what I use. So. Um, I just, these are developed very slowly because it's layer upon layer of color, very slowly bringing up the final color. And as such, it takes a long time for them to get done. What did happen to Alice will be shown in full in September, either on site in New York or it'll be streamed. I mean, it just depends on what our world is like at that time. But in the meantime, I will be posting little sn teaser snippets every month, um, and you can sign up for them, either through my website at ValerieHerd.com, or I'll be posting them on my Facebook page and on Instagram. Just look for the hashtag ValerieHerd and don't ask Alice. Until then, Thanks for visiting me, both you and BCA. Thanks for everyone and stay safe.